Hey everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. Uh, we're gonna be going way beyond the basics today. We're gonna explore some really interesting patterns we've been seeing in how Bitcoin's price moves. Especially what happens when most of the financial world is asleep. You can think of it like we're gonna uncover Bitcoin's secret life. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And the guide for our deep dive today is this fascinating article. It's on Quantpedia and it's called How to Profitably Trade Bitcoin's Overnight Sessions. Now, you don't have to be a trader to find this interesting at all. What this analysis does is it gives us a glimpse into how Bitcoin is starting to behave more and more like traditional markets, even though it's this digital maverick. You know? OK, so set the stage for me. What is so special about Bitcoin trading overnight? Well, unlike traditional stocks, you know, where they have those set trading hours, the Bitcoin market is always open for business. And because of this continuous trading, there's this perception that it's this wild, unpredictable market. But this Quantpedia analysis is suggesting that there might be more structure to the story than it seems. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Interesting. So what kind of structure are we talking about? Well, they discovered something called the overnight effect, which is really just a fancy way of saying that a big portion of Bitcoin's price swings, both upward and downward, by the way, happen during those overnight sessions. Hold on. So you're telling me that while most of us are, you know, catching some Zs, Bitcoin is out there making some serious moves. Why is that? Well, there's a couple theories floating around out there. One idea is that when those traditional markets close up for the day, the volume of Bitcoin trading drops. It's kind of like a party, you know, where most of the guests have left and suddenly the music seems louder. Even small movements feel more dramatic. So in the same way, when there's less people participating in the Bitcoin market overnight, any news or global events that come out can have like an outsized impact on the price, leading to those larger swings that we were talking about. It's all connected to this concept called the overnight risk premium. Overnight risk premium. Break that down for me. So basically, it means that holding on to an asset when there's less liquidity, like during overnight trading, could mean higher potential rewards. But on the other hand, also higher risk. It's that classic, you know, high risk, high reward. Makes sense. So less liquidity means that a news story that might just cause a small ripple during the day could cause a tidal wave overnight. Now, we've been talking about overnight trading, but the title of the article we're looking at today mentions overnight sessions. Is that the same thing? That's a great question. I think it really highlights how we're starting to view Bitcoin more and more through the lens of traditional markets. Sessions usually refer to those specific trading windows within a day. But while Bitcoin trades all the time, you know, continuously, analysts are starting to break it down into sessions. Like, you know, you have your Asian session, your European session, and the U.S. session, all just to better understand its behavior. And this Quantpedia analysis that we're looking at is focusing on those sessions that happen outside of the regular U.S. market hours. So even though Bitcoin is kind of doing its own thing, you know, marching to the beat of its own digital drum, it's starting to dance a little bit with the traditional market's rhythm. Yeah, exactly. And I think this dance gets even more interesting when you consider how much influence institutional investors are starting to have on the Bitcoin market. They're kind of like the new kids in town, but they're coming in with a lot of power and that's definitely shaking things up. Tell me more about that. How are these institutional investors changing the game? Well, think about it. These big institutions like, you know, pension funds, hedge funds, they're used to operating within that traditional financial system with its set trading hours. And they make their big moves, you know, when Wall Street is open for business. Right. So even when they're playing around in the 24-7 world of Bitcoin, they're still on Wall Street time. But how does that relate to this whole overnight effect we've been talking about? That's where it gets really interesting. You see, Bitcoin is increasingly being integrated into mainstream finance through things like Bitcoin ETFs. And these ETFs provide a more familiar and a more regulated way for these institutional investors to get a piece of the Bitcoin pie. But here's the thing. Their trading activity tends to be concentrated around the open and close of those traditional markets. It's like they're bringing their Wall Street habits with them to the crypto party. So even though Bitcoin is trading 24-7, 
These institutional players are really only making a splash during those times that align with traditional market hours. It's like the Wild West is being tamed a little bit. Exactly. And what's interesting is that their trading activity, even though it's concentrated in those specific periods, can have this ripple effect throughout the entire 24-hour cycle, which potentially contributes to this overnight effect that the Quantpedia analysis observed. Now, this whole overnight effect is fascinating. But it gets even more interesting when you consider what happens over the weekend. You know, when traditional markets are closed, but Bitcoin keeps on chugging along, it's like Bitcoin's time to shine. I'm ready to hear it. Well, what the Quantpedia analysis found was that some of the biggest price swings happen between when the market closes on Friday and then when it opens again on Monday. During the week, Bitcoin is sharing the spotlight with all these other assets and markets. You know, news and global events have to compete for attention. Their impact is kind of diluted by all the other noise. But over the weekend, Bitcoin has the stage all to itself. So it's free to react more strongly to any developments without being anchored by those traditional markets. And I think this weekend effect is another piece of the puzzle that suggests Bitcoin is increasingly behaving in ways that mirror traditional markets, even though it is a digital asset, you know, with its own unique characteristics. This is all so fascinating. But it begs the million dollar question. Can we use this knowledge to our advantage? Can we make smarter investment decisions? Is there a way to turn these insights into profits? Well, that's exactly what the Quantpedia analysis tries to answer. They explore some specific trading strategies that are aimed at capitalizing on these trends, especially this weekend effect and the overnight effect that we've been discussing. One strategy in particular that they highlight is called the Max 10 strategy. I'm ready to hear all about that. But first, I'm curious, are there certain days of the week when these patterns are even more noticeable? Yeah. That's a great question. And actually, the Quantpedia analysis looked into that specifically. What they found was that, on average, most of Bitcoin's positive price action happens in the early part of the week. So from Friday's close to Monday's open, then Monday's close to Tuesday's open, and then Tuesday's close to Wednesday's open seem to be the best times for gains. So it's like a mini rally to start the week, fueled by that weekend effect we were talking about. Like Bitcoin gets this burst of energy when traditional markets are closed and that momentum carries over into the beginning of the week. But what happens as the week goes on? Does that pattern continue? That's where things get even more interesting. The closer we get to Friday, Bitcoin's performance tends to go down both during the day and overnight. It's like it runs out of steam as the week goes on and those traditional markets are getting ready for the weekend. You know, it makes you wonder if it's connected somehow to those institutional investors getting ready to make their moves when the markets open back up. We talked earlier about how they tend to trade when the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ are open. For sure. It's like a gravitational pull, you know, drawing Bitcoin's price closer to that Wall Street schedule even over the weekend. Now, that's just a theory, of course, but it could explain why we see less movement with Bitcoin's price later in the week when those big players are more active. OK, so we've got this interesting day of the week pattern where the early part of the week seems to be better for Bitcoin's price at least historically speaking. But how do we use this information to come up with a trading strategy? Well, as you know, no trading strategy is perfect. And just because we understand these patterns doesn't mean we're guaranteed to make money. But the Quantpedia analysis seems to suggest that it could give us an advantage. Right. It's all about getting the odds on your side. So how do they use this day of the week thing in their max 10 strategy? OK, so this max 10 strategy is what's called a trend following strategy. You basically buy Bitcoin when it hits its highest price in the last 10 days. It's like catching a wave when it's at its peak and riding it for more gains. Got it. So it's a momentum play. Buy high, sell higher. And how does that relate to the day of the week pattern? It's all about the timing. They found that using this max 10 strategy during those early week overnight sessions, when those weekend and overnight effects are strongest, could lead to bigger returns. So like a double whammy. <laughs> They're using momentum when Bitcoin is most likely to make those big moves. But wouldn't that also be riskier? Absolutely. More potential reward usually means more risk. And don't forget, we're talking about averages and historical patterns here. Bitcoin is famous for being volatile. And just because something worked in the past doesn't mean it'll work in the future. Right, of course. We should probably say that we're not financial advisors or anything. This isn't investment advice. We're just looking at some interesting research and talking about what it could mean. Exactly. But the point is that being informed is powerful. If we understand what makes prices move, whether it's institutional buying, global news, or even just time passing by, we can make smarter decisions, even if we're not day trading. 
So anything else about this MAX-10 strategy that we should know? Was there anything that surprised you when you read the analysis? One thing that really stuck out to me was how important it is to backtest. They didn't just come up with the strategy and think it would work. They tested it against past Bitcoin prices to see how it would have performed. That kind of testing gives their findings more weight. But of course, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. Yeah, that's really important. It's one thing to have an idea, but it's another to actually prove it with data. It also shows how powerful quantitative analysis can be in understanding these complex financial markets. Totally. It's like having this powerful lens that helps us see patterns and connections that we might miss otherwise. All right, so we've got the MAX-10 strategy, the day of the week patterns, and how we might be able to use this knowledge to make some money. But there is one more piece of the puzzle we need to look at, the role of institutional investors in all of this. Yeah, that's a big one. It's a topic that always gets people talking. Some people say that these big players are, you know, taming the wild west of crypto, while others think that Bitcoin will always stay independent. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a really interesting dynamic, isn't it? Bitcoin went from this fringe asset that came out of the cypherpunk movement to something that's being embraced by the very institutions it was meant to disrupt. It really shows you how much more legitimate it's becoming and its potential as an alternative investment. But it also makes you wonder, you know, is this institutionalization going to change what Bitcoin is at its core? OK, let's break this down. We talked about how Bitcoin ETFs have made it easier and more regulated for institutions to get involved, but how is their trading actually affecting these overnight and weekend effects we've been talking about? Well, remember how we were saying that those big institutions are still on Wall Street time? The Quantpedia analysis actually found that when those Bitcoin ETFs were introduced back in 2021, the overnight effect became even more noticeable. It's like those ETFs created a connection between the traditional financial world and the crypto world, and that opened the floodgates for institutional money. And even if that money is mostly flowing in during traditional market hours, it's still making those overnight sessions more volatile, right? Exactly. Think of it like a ripple effect. The big waves might be happening when Wall Street is open, but those ripples are spreading out across the entire 24-hour trading cycle. So is Bitcoin becoming more predictable, more tied to those traditional market rhythms? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Some people argue that having more institutional involvement brings stability to the Bitcoin market and makes it more mature so it's more attractive to regular investors. But then others are worried that it could stifle Bitcoin's innovation, you know, that it could lose its potential to really shake things up. It's like a philosophical debate. Does Bitcoin need to be accepted by the establishment to succeed? Or will that end up compromising what it stands for? Yeah, it's a debate that's probably going to go on for a while, and there might not be an easy answer. But what is clear is that Bitcoin is changing. And the line between the traditional financial world and the crypto world is getting blurry. So what's the takeaway for our listeners today? What should they be thinking about as they navigate this constantly changing landscape? I think the most important thing is awareness. Bitcoin might be a digital asset, but it's being affected by the same things that drive traditional markets. And understanding those forces, those ripple effects, is crucial for anyone who wants to invest in or trade Bitcoin. And don't forget to be curious. This Quantpedia analysis is a great example of how data and research can help us understand these complex dynamics. It reminds us that there's always more to learn, more to explore. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe this deep dive will inspire our listeners to go out and do some of their own research. After all, the world of finance is always changing. And the more you understand those changes, the better prepared you'll be. Well said. And on that note, we've reached the end of our deep dive into Bitcoin's overnight secrets. We talked about the overnight effect and the weekend effect, and the growing influence of those institutional investors. I hope this has given you a fresh perspective on Bitcoin and its relationship with those traditional markets and the potential opportunities and risks that come with it. It's been a great conversation as always. I agree. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving deep. 